Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a film most people are probably going to see simply because Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt are starring in it. They along with the rest of this star-studded cast were enough to fill theaters, but it's also a Quentin Tarantino film. So at the very least, you know it's going to also have some really good dialogue and be a film that looks amazing. And this is definitely the case here. It's a film that deserves to be talked about. And for those who've seen the film, I'm sure you are left with some pretty lasting images, especially when it comes to the film's ending. So today, we're going to take a look at why. Why the ending to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is so memorable. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood follows an actor named Rick Dalton along with his stuntman Cliff Booth as they navigate through the ups and downs associated with life in Hollywood. While the film mostly serves as Tarantino's fictional love letter to film and cinema, there are some subplots that are very real. Such as the consuming aspects of being a Hollywood star and the pressures stars may face while attempting to maintain that celebrity. There is, however, another plot point in the film that is a bit more sinister, yet it's taken directly from real life events. This would be the Tate LaBianca murders of 1969. For some quick elaboration, these were a series of murders committed by the Madsen family which included the killings of store owners Lino and Rosemary LaBianca, but the film mainly focuses on the events that included actress Sharon Tate and four of her friends. The cult members who don't even deserve their actual names mentioned in my video were ordered to break into the home of Terry Melcher, a record producer with ties to acts like the Beach Boys and the Birds, and kill everyone inside the house. The reason being, Melcher refused to produce Manson's music in the past, leading to Manson wanting the ultimate revenge. However, the only problem is that Melcher no longer lived there and the home was being rented out to acclaimed movie director Roman Polanski and his then eight-month pregnant girlfriend, Sharon Tate. Unfortunately, this didn't stop the cult members from entering the home and murdering everyone inside of it, including the pregnant Sharon Tate. Now, knowing this, watching the film, as soon as the Manson family is mentioned, we, the audience, can't help but feel like there's this underlying sense of doom and dread despite an otherwise wholesome and playful tone. For example, we can go from scenes of Rick Dalton comically performing on a TV set to Cliff meeting the Manson family at Spawn Ranch, which is also a real place. For a film with conflicting tones, Tarantino manages them perfectly, as this is genuinely one of the tensest scenes I have ever watched. Because of what we know from the Manson family in real life, we can't help but feel like this could be Cliff's undoing here. He delves deep into their world with no backup or help. The sound design paired with masterful direction and the subtle switching of camera angles is enough to have us on edge throughout the entire encounter. Cliff, however, survives this ordeal, but this is enough to keep the sinister undertone throughout the film, which is important for its forever memorable ending. So taking what we know about Sharon Tate and her story in real life, we assume the film is ultimately going to end on a similar note. However, knowing Tarantino and his penchant for revising history, there is the possibility of things won't go as they did in real life. And boy, is that the case here. We still get a masterful setup that is simultaneously eerie and entertaining as we see the Manson family approach the neighborhood and home of Sharon Tate. However, due to a pretty hilarious encounter with Rick Dalton, we get the necessary shift Tarantino needs to alter history. Instead of the cult members choosing to enter the Tate home, they choose to go after Rick instead 
and this proves to turn out great for Tate and her friends, but terribly for the cult members. What they don't know is that Rick is in the house, but he's also there with his good old buddy Cliff. And let's just say Cliff has some pretty mysterious issues. Like I'm pretty sure he kills or has killed people before. And after a pretty hilarious encounter with the cult members, that's exactly what he and his good girl Brandy do. Now I know this may sound bad, but I loved every minute of this. I can't show most of it because in typical Tarantino fashion, it's over the top. There's blood everywhere and I would for sure get demonetized if I showed a bit of this. Now, this scene isn't just memorable for its over-the-top violence and shocking ending, but it's also crafted really well. From the blocking to the music and performances, Brad Pitt was great throughout the entire film, but it's here where he really earns his Oscar in my opinion. We don't know much about Cliff throughout the film, but one thing we do know is he can be a pretty violent individual, single-handedly canceling out any ounce of viciousness the Manson clan had. He seems like he's full of rage and while we are, or at least I was, excited about what he was doing to these people, we are only left more confused by who Cliff really is and how does he know how to do all of this. So not only is this scene highly entertaining, it's integral to the mysterious nature of one of the film's central characters. So even after the violence is ended and Rick is done literally cooking a chick, we're left asking ourselves, what the fuck happened? Regardless if you liked the conclusion or not, you probably did have its images or at least questions about its ending. Even if the main question you're left with is, what if this really happened instead of the unfortunate and tragic events in real life? And usually stuff like this may come off as insensitive to some, including the victim's families. But instead, I feel like hearing Sharon's voice at the end of this film kind of feels cathartic in a way and ultimately has us wishing that Tarantino's ending was the one we got in real life. So Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a great film in my opinion. It's one of Tarantino's best shot movies and a lot of this is owed to the beautiful recreation of 1960s Los Angeles. The detail that went into creating each set piece makes otherwise long driving or walking shots look amazing. The character of Cliff is legendary in my opinion and Brad Pitt played him perfectly. But Leonardo DiCaprio's performance is equally as good. He probably has some of the most emotional scenes in the film and captures the essence of an aging movie star effortlessly. I do think the film is a tad bit long with some scenes kind of tending to drag a little bit, but even though they don't add as much to the overall story, they still are quite amazing to look at. I really enjoyed this one a lot, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood gets an 8.9 out of 10 from me. However, as always, I'm interested in hearing what you guys think. What did you think of the ending here? Did you like it? Do you think it was insensitive? Too violent? I love hearing from you guys, and even if you're new here, I'd like to hear from you too. Also, if you like this video, feel free to subscribe and join this community. We got more work coming, and as always, I appreciate you all. Be safe out there, and I'll catch you soon.